Okay, so we're going to talk about exactly what is um, Google Meet and um, how can you start it in class, what do you, or to do class while we're on our non-instructional days and um, why you might want to use it. So the first thing um, to get there, if you ever use Google Hangouts, um, Meet is kind of like that, except for right now, we are going to be able to record a Meet, and I'll explain why that's important. Um, for your use in class when we're doing our NTI days, okay? So go to meet.google.com or you can go to your waffle and then just click where it says meet. It should be one of the tools that pops up. Here on my meet page, you notice that I am logged in as myself from my Hardin County Schools address. Students do not usually have access to this tool, but we have opened it up during our NTI days. So I'm just going to start a meeting. I would suggest that here that you are as, um, as specific as possible with your meeting name. So let's do, you know, March uh, 17th. Um, that way kiddos know whenever it posts, it'll have that tag there so they'll see it. The way that you can use this, let's just hit continue. So now I'm on the meet page, okay? This has not started yet. The call has not started. Um, it's kind of like a video conferencing call. If you've ever heard of Zoom or um, maybe even like a Skype or something like that that you've used. OK, so I know that the camera is working because I see myself. Um, I know that the sound is working because I see the sound over here in the corner and it's actually moving. You need a um, mic and video in order to do one of these effectively with your class. Your class does not have to have access to those same resources. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and join the meeting, which means I'm going to start. Okay, I've now started the meeting. This info is important. I'll show you where to find it in a second in case you lose it from here. But it's important for here because do you see this line here where it says the HTTPS? That is the actual web address for this meeting. Okay, I don't want to hit copy joining info. I just want to grab this web address and I'm going to copy or control C. And then I'm going to go into my Google Classroom. Now, I would have already posted something to my stream that said, we will have a live class at whatever time it is, 10 a.m. today. I would try to just do one per class per day, keeping in mind that um, if you have multiple students in one house trying to use one device, that it's going to be hard for them to take turns and get on there, you know, multiple times during the day. So I would have posted this announcement already that way, maybe even put it in your remind or your dojo or however it is that you communicate with your class. That way they know that they can come back to the classroom at 10 a.m. today and what they're going to see. So I'm going to post this. So let's imagine it's 10 a.m. day of. I'm now going to go ahead. And I'm going to take that address that I grabbed off of here and I am going to link it into my classroom. Control V or, you know, whatever to paste it, add the link. And now I'm going to post this to my class. My class is this going to see this in the stream. All they would do to join is click on it and they would be in this meeting with me. So now back to our meeting space. This is what my class is going to see when they come in this screen here, okay? One of the first things you're gonna to wanna to do with your kiddos is to go over exactly what are your expectations for these live meetings. You can see along the bottom, I have a control bar. Right now, my mic is on and my camera is on. I would instruct my students as soon as they log on to go to this toolbar and to turn off their mic and their camera. Okay. That way we don't have them doing silly things or them on there. Um, the background noise from their house, whatever. I would just set that as an expectation right off the bat with my students. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that way that they're not doing that. Um, when they want to talk, they can unmute if it was the kind of thing where you're going to be having discussion or you they wanted to pop in and ask you a question. Okay, let me take you around the screen now. If you look in the upper right-hand corner and you click on this where it's got the little people, 
This is going to show me a list of everyone that is in this meeting with me. So all your students would be listed over here. There's also a chat function. That might be you would tell them, hey, I want you to mute your mics if you have questions as we go, throw them in the chat. This is also one of those things where you can't necessarily mute somebody from the chat at this point. So we would want to um, keep an eye on that. If a student posts something inappropriate, then uh, warning, however you want to do it. But I would say that would be one of those times when I pick up a phone. I'm going to call the parents and say, hey, we're trying to do this to still give instruction to the students. Um, and your student was, you know, it was a problem on there today. So that they know that it was a problem, maybe then that they can help with that, okay? All right, so that's the basics of that. Now, the really cool thing about these right now um, that is a free service that's being offered to us is that we can record this. So say a student couldn't get on at 10 a.m., I can post the link to it so they still get my lecture and what it is that I'm doing. In order to record this, you're going to go to the snowman at the bottom of the screen here. That's what I call the three dots, okay? I'm going to click that and go up to record meeting. This does remind us that everyone whose face is on the screen needs to be somebody that, you know, knows that what's going on. So I would let the kiddos know, hey, I'm recording this, just so they know. I would also remember not to share this anywhere outside of our classroom for our classroom purposes during these non-instructional days now, because in theory, there might be student faces here and first names. First, first and last, first and last, you're going to see. Anyway, so now my meeting's being recorded. At this point in time, depending on your grade level and however you want to use this, I do think it's really cool because our kids are still going to be hearing our voice and seeing our face, which, believe it or not, they're probably going to start to miss very soon if they're cooped up in their houses. However, at this point in time, I could, I could do my lecture and talk the way I would in class. You can bust out a whiteboard and hold it beside you. You can write on a piece of paper, however you want to do it. Um, if you have younger kids, you could say, hey, at noon every day, I'm going to jump on and I'm going to read you guys a book. And I could have a picture book and I could read to them. However it is that you wanted to handle that situation. But the other thing that you can do is you can actually carry on a normal lecture. I, um, on another tab, have some slides open. Let's say those were my lecture slides or even a PowerPoint, whatever I've got open on my screen. It can be a website and be anything. I'm going to go to the bottom right-hand corner here where it says present now, and I'm actually going to share my screen. I'm going to do my entire screen. You do have to click on it in the middle of the page and then hit share. So now you're seeing whatever is on my screen. Okay, I'm going to pop over to the slides that I have. And from here, I could go ahead and just conduct my class. If someone puts something in the chat, you're going to hear a little bell that would notify you that they've said something, and you can flip back over to that window and open up the chat again and check out what it is that they said. So this is my email address, brandy.new at hardenedockyschools.us. Um, and then this is what we're talking about. What is me? Well, we know it's a video chat. We talked about how to start it. We talked about grabbing that uh, website address and putting it into Classroom. We covered just some basic ideas of how to use it, and we talked about how to record. I'm going to show you another cool thing that you could do at this point, especially maybe if you're a math teacher. I can go to this uh, website that's called AWWAPP, A-W-W-A-P-P. It's just basically an online whiteboard, especially if you have some sort of touch device. This would be really cool. We're using the free version right now, so we may get some pop-ups down here. If you want to sign up for a free 14-day trial, you can do that. It's super easy to do. You just go to sign up or log in. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to write on the screen. Let's say we're doing a math lesson with the kids. So I could go ahead at this point, you know, whatever it is I want to do. High school people, you're not allowed to make fun of me right now because of my example. And I could go on and explain to my kids, this is how we would, you know, figure out this problem. There is also an eraser, and there are some shape tools, some basic shape and typing tools for you here. There's even a little post-it, okay? Um, we could post our objective there. Wouldn't that be fancy? If I'm done with that page, I can actually just create a new board. Bam, I get another one, and I can go to another one. 
there's those fun pop-ups, okay, that are coming up. And that is just because I um, didn't sign up for, I didn't show you the free version here or the paid version here. I'm going to go back over to my window and I'm done presenting. I want to talk to my kids again. So I'm going to hit stop presenting. And here we are. They're back to your face. Okay. Um, it is still recording at this point in time. Right. So I showed you, I was going to show you, we're going to click out of that window. If um, you lose that initial joining uh, information, if you check right here, just click this. Once again, there's that exact same join information. There's that exact same web address that I can send to my students. Now, I'm going to stop the recording. Let's say I'm done with my lecture or my class or whatever. I'm going to go back to the snowman. I'm going to say stop recording. Here's the beauty. This is going to pop up and it says that this will be saved to Brandy News Drive. Yes, cool. I'm going to hit stop recording. Now, it takes about five minutes for me. It has been tonight. It may be more next week when we're all using it. Um, but this is now saved into a folder on my drive. So I'm going to pop over and show you my drive. And on my drive, it, it created a folder for me. I did not create that. It created a folder called Meet Recordings. And inside there are all the meeting recordings I've done. These are two other ones. The one that I just did has not processed yet. When it does process, you get an email with the um, actual web address in there too. Okay, so the website address. Once I get that website address to that video, I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna copy and paste. Mark. Share. I'm gonna grab that shareable link. Okay, I'm going to copy that link. It says that anyone at Harden County Schools with the link can view. I'm going to take that back and then say, hey, if you missed class at, what did I say, 10 a.m., here's the link to watch. And I'm going to add the link. then what they're going to get is a link to our video of the um, meeting that we had earlier today. So that would give you a chance to interact live with your students, but also record it for use with um, other students when they get time to later or when they get internet access or maybe even whenever you come back. So that's how you use um, Meet, Google Meet. If you have any questions about it, let me know and good luck with that. Involved with Kentucky Go Digital. Attend regional events, like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or follow us on Twitter.